Hello everyone, welcome to Synthesis IAS Academy, a place where blend of ideas take place. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan Thumala and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations and internal security along with the daily analysis of the Hindu newspaper and in-depth analysis of editorials and articles. And certainly this session will help you to write throughout the prelims as well as mains examinations because I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases. So the important point here is that keywords and the key phrases. So these keywords and the key phrases are very very important and please do focus on the keywords and the key phrases in the newspaper or any of your topics what you read subject also. So here in this case, in the particular topic which I would be discussing, I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases which will be certainly useful for you for the prelims as well as mains examinations. And for mains, it will be useful for you to prepare answer writing that is to make short notes for your answer writing practice. So certainly your answers would be scoring higher marks because you would be including or inculcating the keywords and the key phrases wherein your answers would be precise and concise so that you can score higher marks in the mains examination. So this session or the topic will be useful for both prelims and mains for 2020 as well as 2021. And the topic for the day is hypersonic air breathing scamjet technology. So we will be focusing on this topic and the topic for the day is hypersonic air breathing scamjet technology. And once we get into the topic, I would also make sure that I will also pierce into the topic that is with the subtopics of hypersonic cruise vehicle test, scramjet engine technology demonstrator I would be discussing and the concepts also I would be discussing about the air breathing engines of the scramjet technology and also we will discuss about the advanced technology vehicle and we will also focus on the advantages challenges and also the questions for the day that is for hypersonic air breathing scamjet technology so do follow the entire topic which would be useful for you for both prelims and means upsc perspective and now we will get into the topic that is a hypersonic cruise vehicle test and the test has been conducted on September 7, 2020 by DRDO and this is a air breathing scamjet technology and which has used with a flight test, it has gone ahead with a flight test DRDO with hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle. So here the two keywords you need to focus is hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle flight test and hypersonic air breathing scamjet technology. So the technology is cramjet, the keyword and the vehicle is hypersonic technology demonstrator and the one who has been successfully conducted the test is the DRDO, Defense Research Development Organizations, which this information would certainly be useful for preliminary examination and the hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle is capable of powering a speed for the missiles to attain a speed of around max 6 that is 6 times the speed of the sound so what is the speed of the sound the speed of the sound is 344 meters per second or 1238 kilometers per hour or 770 meters per miles per hour so this is again a keyword which is very useful information for preliminary examination and this technology that is hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle it operates on a scramjet engine. So this demonstrator vehicle is operating on a scramjet technology as against the ramjet. So it is not ramjet but it is the latest or the renowned version of ramjet that is scramjet technology. And the, if you compare with the ramjet technology engine, it operates at a supersonic speed of Mach 3. So ramjet operates at Mach 3 and then scramjet operates around max 6 so this is a useful information and distinguishing between the ramjet engine supersonic speed and then scramjet it is hypersonic speed do understand 
scramjet is hypersonic ramjet is supersonic with mach 3 and then scramjet hypersonic with around mach 6 and then by going ahead with the test which has been successfully conducted by drdo in now india is in a select club of nations and this test which has been taken up technology demonstrator was conducted in june 2019 please do understand here the test of the technology demonstrator the test of the technology demonstrator was conducted in 2019 but the hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle was used for the hypersonic air breathing scramjet technology on the test was successful on september 7 2020 so do not get confused if a question is been part of your statement which among the following statements 2020 and 2019 here 2019 it is technology demonstrator was conducted test but in regards to the hypersonic technology demonstrator it was on september 7 2020 and now we will focus at the isro's scramjet engine technology demonstrator so we know that the satellites are launched into the orbit through a multi-stage stat satellite launch vehicle so the vehicles which are launching the satellites in the orbit are the multi-staged satellite launch vehicles and when this multi-stage satellite launch vehicles are launched it can be used only once it can be used only once and they are very expensive and their efficiency is low please you understand we are talking about the previous satellites which were launched by the multi-stage satellite launch vehicles which we are not considering in this scramjet and now we will focus how it is different from scramjet so initially it was a multi-stage it would be used only once and it was expensive and the efficiency was very low so that what we need to make sure is that why the expensive and efficiency efficiency was low because the launch vehicles used to carry the oxidizer along with along with the fuel so along with the fuel we is, i mean the launch vehicle used to carry the oxidizer but with the new or the next generation launch vehicles the technology has changed that is the propulsion system was using the atmosphere oxygen that means the oxygen which is in the atmosphere air will be used will be used and that will make sure that it will reduce the propellant required so that it will not be expensive and the efficiency will be very high compared to the multi-stage satellite launch vehicles which were launching the satellites earlier into the orbit comparing it with the next generation launch vehicles that is now we will focus with the scramjet and now this next generation launch vehicle are reusable earlier it was used only once now it is reusable and the cost of the launching satellite will further come down so all these are benefits and the advantage with this scramjet engine technology hypersonic one and the new technology which has been come up with the next generation launch vehicle which are reusable is with the a breathing propulsion so this is the a breathing propulsion which makes it very clear that it is considering or it is utilizing the atmospheric oxygen so that the launch vehicles are not carrying the oxidizer along with the fuel along with the fuel and in the scramjet the fuel used is hydrogen so here the propulsion system is which it is in regards to the a breathing propulsion and so that it will have access to the space at a far low cost and then while we are taking the strategic nature of the air breathing technology this will make sure that there is a significant shift in the launch vehicle design so while using the air breathing technology that is the hypersonic scramjet engine technology there will be a potential in making sure there is a significant shift in the launch vehicle design not only in india but also in across the world and this will develop the technology for air breathing engines and now we will focus at the three concepts of air breathing engines because we have focused the next generation launch vehicles will be in regards to the air breathing technology so we will focus at the concept the three concepts so 
you have the ramjet you have scramjet and dual mode ramjet and these are the three concepts of air breathing engines and these are very important keyword for the preliminary examination so various concepts in regards to the air breathing engines are ramjet scramjet and dual mode ramjet so now we will focus at what is ramjet scramjet and dual mode ramjet so definitely a ramjet is a air breathing jet engine no doubt about it scramjet is also a breathing jet engine as well as the previous one the earlier one version that is ramjet is also air breathing jet engine but which uses the vehicle's forward motion to compress the air for combustion without rotating compression so if you look at it it is going ahead with making sure that the vehicle's forward motion this is a forward motion forward motion to compress the incoming air so you have the compression here and the incoming air inlet the air is flowing inside so you have a compressor here so this compressor will go ahead with adding for the combustion so you have this combustion taking place here the combustion chamber so the combustion do take place in the combustion chamber but without rotating the compressor that, that means the compressor is not in functioning but it is using the vehicle's forward motion please do understand here the compressor you, you are not using i mean the compressor is not into action but definitely combustion takes place how the combustion is taking place by using the vehicle's forward motion so the forward motion the vehicle is used to compress the incoming air to compress the incoming air and then the combustion takes place in the combustion chamber without the rotating of the compressor and when the fuel is injected so you have the fuel here and the fuel is injected here when the fuel is injected into the combustion chamber wherein it mixes with the hot air that means the air which is entering into the through the through the compressor and into the combustion chamber wherein there the compressor compressing of the air is taking place and the combustion is do take place there in the combustion chamber and there the combustion the fuel and the air please do understand here fuel plus air the air which is atmospheric air and the fuel of which is being carried through the launch vehicle in the launch vehicle they both get mixed up and they hot compressed air and then it ignites so the igni ignite ignition of the launch vehicle takes place because of the fuel and the air in the combustion chamber and then it ignites it starts and then the ramjet powered vehicle requires an assisted takeoff now what is important is this ramjet requires an assisted it requires a takeoff lift that is like a rocket it requires a lock rocket so that it assists to make sure that it is taking off so that it will have an additional acceleration to the speed wherein it begins to produce a thrust so initial thrust has to be given with an take off rocket assisted to accelerate it and the thrust is given so that the speed is accelerated and then it moves forward so this is the concept of the ramjet and then ramjet works most efficiently at a supersonic so this is the little drawback so it works only with the supersonic speed which is of mach 3 that is three times the speed of the sound and it can operate up to speed of mach 6 up to mach 6 but it can efficiently work at mach 3 at a supersonic speed and definitely when when the i mean def, after attaining the mach 3 the efficiency starts to drop after attaining the mach 3 the efficiency of the ramjet drops drops when the vehicle reaches the hypersonic speed so do understand it can have efficient at mach 3 and at mach 6 it drops it drops that is at the hypersonic here at supersonic it is very high at hypersonic speed uh, close to around mach 6 the efficiency starts dipping so that is the difference between now what we look at scramjet so we are focused at the ramjet the way it works it is at mostly efficient it works at supersonic speed at mach 3 but we want 
or we were testing for more than supersonic at hypersonic speed so thereby the new engine has been designed that is the ram scramjet engine this is the second one and this is just an improved version of the ramjet engine which is efficiently or it operates efficiently at the hypersonic speed that is of max 6 and here what happens is it allows supersonic combustion to take place in the ramjet there is only combustion which is taking place but here it is supersonic combustion which takes place in the ramjet engine that is why the ramjet engine is now a latest version of the ramjet engine is scramjet so scram sc is what supersonic combustion so the supersonic combustion do take place in the combustion chamber in the scramjet engine please do understand this is scramjet engine so in the scramjet engine what type of combustion is taking place it is this supersonic combustion but if you focus at the ramjet you have the only combustion the combustion is only taking place that is the difference between and here when we are looking at this the air also is getting into the hypersonic air stream is getting into it and then further the air and the fuel so when we are talking of the fuel it is hydrogen both mixtures and then supersonic combustion do take place in the combustion chamber and then it moves that means when it is exhausting that when the gas is exhausted or the exhaust that is when it is relieving the gas it is also relieving at or it is coming out at a hypersonic speed so intake income and outcome or outcome is both at hypersonic that is the difference between ramjet and scramjet because the combustion in the engine do take place at a supersonic combustion speed and now we will look at the other concept of the scramjet that is a dual mode ramjet dmrj is a type of engine wherein a ramjet engine here this is a very important concept because here you have a dual you have a dual mode two types in the ramjet engine so a ramjet transforms into scramjet Please do understand. Here the ramjet is transforming into scramjet over Mach 4. So we, we have looked at ramjet. The speed here is at Mach 3 more efficiently and then it starts dipping. It drops when it is attaining the speed, speed of around hypersonic that is Mach 6. But here dual mode what happens is when it is reaching when it crosses Mach 3 and when it is reaching at Mach 4 to Mach 8, that is 4 to 8 between, it can efficiently operate both in subsonic and supersonic. Please do understand. So it is subsonic, supersonic mode, it do take place. I mean the combustion modes do operate both in subsonic and then supersonic, that is hypersonic, that is called as dual mode ramjet. So we are focused on ramjet and the scramjet ramjet scramjet and dual mode which are very very conceptual understanding for you all as a civil servant aspirants in regards to the a breathing engines we are not talking about whether it is scramjet ramjet or dual mode it is a breathing engines and you have ramjet scramjet and dual mode ramjet and now we will look at the a breathing propulsion project propulsion what is making uh, a, a project or a launch vehicle to move further it's lifting it it's propelling so any kind of thrust which is given and it is moving forward so isro has come up with or it has developed a breathing propulsion project in the year 2016 again this information is crucial for you for the preliminary examination which year the isro has come up with development of a breathing propulsion project it is in the year 2016 on august 28th and it has successfully tested the hypersonic flight test at a max 6 so a breathing propulsion that is at max 6 it has tested on in in the year 2016 and the first experimental mission for the a breathing propulsion system has been successfully conducted at satish dhawan space center sar sri hariputta again this is where the air breathing propulsion system for the first time a experimental basis the ISRO has conducted and it was successful was at the space Dhawan space Satish Dhawan space center at Sierra Kota prelims 
perspective for UPSC. And in the scramjet engine, ISRO has used fuel and oxidizer. So hydrogen is used as a fuel and the oxygen from the atmosphere fuel, uh, atmospheric air is used as an oxidizer. Please do understand here. So air is entering into here and then you have a fuel tank here. Fuel tank as I have explained even in the ramjet. So you have various shock waves. So all those shock waves it is trying to nullify it and then you I mean then the air gets into the combustor and here definitely the oil I mean the fuel that is the hydrogen and the air do go ahead with the combustion and then again the air is released that is the gas is exhausted so before it is exhaust you have a cooling channel here so because the combustion takes place at a supersonic combustion so definitely there is high temperature there is high temperature so that high temperature has to be controlled so the cooling channels do control the high temperature and then the gas is exhausted and the gas is exhausted here so you have the pumps and the turbines also so this is the entire air breathing propulsion project of this cramjet engine and then we will also focus at air advanced technology vehicle so when we are talking about the isro's advanced technology vehicle it is an advanced sounding rocket it is an advanced sounding rocket which is another keyword to focus for you all and which is a solid rocket booster so it is advanced technology vehicle is a solid rocket booster please do understand advanced technology vehicle is a solid rocket booster which is used for the scramjet engine for the supersonic conditions so definitely you want a booster for the launch vehicle and isro's launch vehicle is now advanced technology vehicle so for that they have gone ahead that is for the scramjet engine they have gone ahead with the advanced sounding rocket which is sound rocket booster and atv carrying scramjet engines it has carried 3277 kg lift off keyword for prelims and in this atv you have a two stage spin you have a two stage and the first stage is you have the sounding rocket and in the second stage you have the booster and sustainer please do understand this concept is also very useful for prelims examination so in the two stage advanced technology vehicle of the isro in the first stage you have the sounding rocket in the second stage you have the booster and the sustainer so you have the booster here you have the sustainer here so both are in the second stage please do understand so you can have a clear picture about by the image so it is a two stage so this is the first stage so you have the sounding rocket which is as a solid rocket booster and the twin scramjet engines are mounted on the bank back of the second stage the engine so this engine is mounted on the back of the second stage so this is a second stage so it is mounted here the engine scramjet engine is mounted on the advanced technology vehicle and once the second stage reaches once the second stage reaches the desired condition that is for the startup so then the initiation to ignite the scramjet engines takes place and the function for about five seconds please do understand here once the second stage reaches so there what happens is the ignitions take place it's very simple once the second stage starts or it reaches the ignition takes place and the function for about five seconds and these are all pre-programmed sequence so please do understand a twin stage or two sta stage pin you have the sustainer booster and the nose and this is a fuel filled system and this is the engine which is mounted on the second stage and we will look at the advantages of this cramjet engine no doubt it will travel at a hypersonic speed and it will be used in the cruise missiles this technology the scramjet technology will be used in the cruise missile which can travel at the hypersonic speed above max 6 and then it is breathtaking in regards to the scramjet engine because air 
as we discussed air gets inside the engine scramjet engine at a supersonic speed and it comes out at a hypersonic speed that is why it can be used in the cruise missiles and the, once it comes out the speed comes out an hypersonic speed it carries the missile also into the in in the hypersonic speed to the target to reach the target and then the fuel injection and the auto ignition are demonstrated this is the technological maturity which is the advantage which is the advantage or which is the maturity what we have achieved is the fuel injection and auto ignition keywords please do focus on these two keywords which you can add it as a short notes in your mains answer writing so the fuel injection and auto ignition fuel injection and auto injection which is been taken up or used in the scramjet is a technological maturity from india's point of view and the scramjet engine works at a high dynamic pressure and at a very high temperature so you have a high pressure and high temperature that is why i just i'll just take you to the previous uh, image that is why you have here the cooling channel because there is high pressure and high temperature so to cool so you have the cooling channel to cool down the pressure and the i mean to the, for the temperature and india is the fourth country to demonstrate successfully the test of this scramjet engine and it is now joined the elite missile club along with united states russia and china again this is very useful for preliminary examination now we will focus the challenges also so definitely there were technical challenges challenges which isro has handled during the development of this scramjet engine so we will focus at what are the challenges so challenges is the design and development of the hypersonic engine air air intake so the air intake which is takes because the air earlier even oxygen was carried oxidizers were carried along with the fuel with the or in the launch vehicle but now through the scramjet engine air atmospheric air used is used as an oxygen so for the design and development it was a challenge and the supersonic combustion in the scramjet engine what happens is supersonic combustion take place and for that that is a challenge to go ahead with the supersonic combustion in the scramjet engine and development of materials which can withstand this is very very a challenging task which use isro has experienced so you need to have a materials which can withstand the high temperature in the engine in the engine and you also have the computational tools to simulate the hypersonic flow and the performance and operability of the engine also during the entire flight speed is also a very challenging task and humongous task for the isro it has experience and to proper thermal management and ground testing of the engine was also the major challenge so we are focused at the challenges also now we will look at the question for the day is that the strategic nature the strategic nature of air breathing technology of air breathing technology which has the potential to bring significant shift in the launch vehicle design so definitely the air breathing technology it has the potential to bring the significant shift in the launch vehicle design not only in india but across the world and worldwide efforts are on to develop the technology for air breathing engines discuss so it could be a probable question in the mains examination in the science and technology in the science and technology for the mains examination this could be a probable question and do focus here in this question i have never mentioned here about scramjet engine about scramjet engine there is no mention about scramjet engine and probably upsc might focus or frame a question without the scramjet engine or without using of the word scramjet without using of the word hypersonic technology without using of the word hypersonic technology so you have a air breathing technology here which is been used and then you have the strategic nature that is it is talking about technology so do discuss about it so 
I hope this was a very informative session and knowledgeable session for you all, which could definitely make you or feel that you are edge over others, both in films and mains examination. So a big thank you to all and a good luck to you all. And then before you sign up, do like the video, share the video and subscribe. And my humble request is do subscribe the Synthesis IAS Academy YouTube channel where a blend of ideas do take place. So I would come up with another topic which would be certainly useful for prelims as well as mains for UPSC perspective and then see you again with a new topic. Thank you. Thank you very much.